Durango, Mexico's Wild West, historically an area associated with banditry and smuggling. Before I was born, John Wayne came here and bought a bunch of cornfields and built a life-size western town. Durango was home of Hollywood's western film movie sets. Over 140 films were shot here with greats like Clint Eastwood, Jack Nicholson, Marlon Brando, Brad Pitt, Michael Douglas, just to name a few. Canadian John Candy died here while filming. It's the home state of revolutionary Pancho Villa. Those were its heydays. The city was founded in 1563. Over 650,000 people live here. I was warned of elevated travel advisories, drug cartel violence, and at all costs to stay off the streets at night. I was told the people of Durango were cold and conservative. But I knew at this place I would be greeted with a warm smile. Mother Superior Judith is friends with my aunt. They also serve seniors who are in desperate need of care. Hola, Susan. From there, I met Julieta and her family. Welcome to Durango! I was off to a good start. While I was walking around the city, enjoying its colonial-style architecture, I noticed something was clearly out of place. And I'm not talking about its Baroque-style cathedral. My shoes certainly didn't fit in. As our younger generation moves towards business casual and vegan footwear, which is more often than not made in China, it is nice to see people here take pride in having nice, shiny leather shoes. A tradition I hope they keep. Having nice shoes is important when walking down one of Durango's pedestrian-only streets in the center of town. My shoes did fit in walking around the Sawatoba and Guadiana Park in the city. These massive green spaces are over 100 acres each and they're connected but they have their own personality. You could easily spend days in here. I actually got lost. Luckily I bumped into these gentlemen who were gracious enough to show me the way out. I didn't see any squirrels in Durango but I sure met a lot of dogs. This is Fernanda and her dogs Nona and Lolo. She told me Casa Bruno was a great spot to stay. It's right in the center of town and a dorm room is under $20. This is Bruna. She lives here. Another thing I noticed, you'll see the city's name everywhere. The people here are proud to call Durango their home. Durango began as a mining town. The nearby Cerro de Mercado was thought to have large reserves of silver, but turned out to be an important source of iron. The mining museum is underneath the central square. It's dark down here, so if you're not wearing nice shiny leather shoes that just got polished in the plaza above, you'll be fine. Nobody will notice. Durango is well known for its venomous scorpions, although there are other states considered higher risk for scorpions in Mexico. About 250,000 people get stung every year in this country. About a thousand of those die. Scorpions spark a fear and fascination in us. This is Julieta. She's studying medicine. She could be treating patients stung by scorpions one day. Let's see how she makes out. Ah! I'd have to drink a lot of mezcal to touch a scorpion. Never mind, eat one. You'll see a lot of scorpion snacks here. Now I was told by locals this is not a true delicacy or a gastronomic treat. This isn't something they have on Sunday dinners. It's really for tourists. In the market, you'll find scorpion tacos. This is where I met Alejandro, who was brave enough to try one. I wasn't totally convinced by Alejandro's yummy face that this is something I needed to try. 
El domingo tienes que ir a visitar el santuario de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe. Santuario is a market that takes place on Sundays. Nestled between all the knickknacks for sale is some really great food. It's the mother load of street food options all in one spot. And if you like pancakes on a Sunday, definitely come here. I brought along my trusty guidebook, and this time Durango is in there. But really, when you can meet locals, who needs a guidebook? Fernanda introduced me to Miguel. He writes guidebooks for food and travel in Durango. I couldn't have found a better guide to help me eat my way through the city. And his food photography is out of this world. You should follow him on Instagram. This guy can make scorpion tacos look good. Now he didn't want to be on camera, so don't tell him, but when he wasn't looking, I taped him. With Miguel's help, I was ready to start turning left for food. We started with breakfast at La Tostada. The service here was absolutely outstanding. There are lots of options on the menu. I ordered the combo which allows you to try a little bit of everything and the price worked out to under $10. Rincón Azteca is also a great place to start your day, especially if you love chilaquiles. Here the crispiness of the corn chips stand out. Also the sauces. The red sauce was incredibly aromatic. The green sauce, delicious, and you can also enjoy it with an egg. I also tried molletes, which is beans and cheese grilled over bread. I was introduced to Café de Olla. It's coffee made with piloncillo, which is like a brown sugar, and cinnamon. Since we're talking coffee, I have to say I was surprised to find a lot of instant coffee here. And being Canadian, coffee is more important than water. Things were getting desperate. Fernanda's like, what are you doing? Go to Republica Cafe, they're the best. Their coffee was out of this world. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that they started in Fort Langley, Canada. Their beans are Mexican and they roast their coffee here. I'll be ordering truckloads of this stuff online when I get home. I came here a lot. I hope they open up more locations. Let's turn left for gorditas. Gorditas Durango say here their gorditas are actually gorditas. When you ask locals who makes the best gorditas, you'll get a lot of different answers, and it'll spark a huge debate, but Gordita's Durango will usually be on that list. You can choose between a corn or flour tortilla. I always go for the corn. They were kind enough to let me sample their fillings, and I have to say, everything here is delicious. The chicharron prensado is my favorite. It's a pressed pork. The asado rojo is also a must and their prices are just a little over a dollar. I also went to Gorditas Obrera. They're a little bit farther away, and their gorditas cost a little bit more, but that doesn't stop these guys from lining up. Their gorditas come a little bit larger, but what really stood out to me here was their tortilla itself. It had the perfect balance of crispy and chewy. Miguel told me that good food is always to be found in the central market. Just skip the scorpion tacos. Mercado Francisco Gomez Palacio has a few options to eat. I decided on Comedor Pili. There are plenty of stews to choose from. But here you must try the Durgenio stew. It's made with green ancho peppers, tomatoes, onion, and beef. And it's a really popular breakfast or lunch item. When they asked me if I enjoyed it, I showed them my empty bowl. And it costs under $5. Miguel told me burgers are popular here in Durango. I'm like, dude, those are skinny. I'm Canadian, we have the best burgers. After a very long burger debate, I needed a drink. I went to Juan Matador. They have a huge selection of mezcal from Durango. It all started very innocently. They have a great Wi-Fi connection which helped me get some work done. I really like it here. I might have stayed a little too long and drank a little too much. Things started to get a little blurry. Despite warnings of walking the streets at night, I was trying to zigzag my way back to the hostel, but I certainly wasn't going the right way. I got lost. Smash that subscribe button if you want to know what happens to me next in part two of Durango. Thanks for watching this episode of Turn Left Right Here. 
If you like what you saw, be sure to hit the subscribe and the like button at the bottom of your screen. Follow me on the social media links below. Tap the bell to be notified of upcoming episodes. And please share with me your comments below.